In this tutorial, we will be adding materials to our door. With the model from part 1 open, move your cursor until it's at the bottom left of the window until it turns into a cross, and then move it to the right in order to split the window into two. With the door selected, make sure that you have a material assigned to the door by clicking on the Materials tab in the Properties window and clicking New. In the left hand panel, open up the Shader Editor by clicking on this button here. The Shader Editor allows you to use nodes which define functions behind the scenes which allow you to manipulate different properties of a material based on certain inputs. The default material is defined by two nodes, the principled BSDF or bidirectional scattering distribution function and the material output. In our case, we're going to delete the principled BSDF node. This should make your door go completely black as Blender now has no information about what the material of the door should look like. So what should our door material look like? Well, if you look at the reference image, you can see that the door is made of wood that the colour is generally purple or maroon, and that there are varied blobs and streaks of colour that are slightly lighter. Before we start making any new material nodes, make sure to rename the material to Door, so that we prevent confusion later. In the Shader Editor, press Shift and A, then in the search bar, find Noise Texture. Do it again, Shift and A, for Colour Ramp and then finally shift an A and search for Glossy BSDF. The circles on the left of each node represent inputs for that node, and the circles on the right represent outputs. By left-clicking and dragging, connect the colour output from the colour ramp node into the colour input of the Glossy BSDF node. Then, connect the BSDF output from that node into the surface input on the material output node. This should give you a shadowy door with colours ranging from black to white, with some reflection. However, this doesn't really look that much like wood, so with the Noise Texture node, connect the Factor Output into the Factor Input of the Colour Ramp node. The Noise Texture produces something called Perlin Noise, which here tells Blender to display different colours from the colour ramp at different parts of the material. The effect is this very nice cloud-like texture. OK, great. Now, add one more slider to the colour ramp. You are of course welcome to use whatever colours you'd like, however, if you'd like to follow me exactly, then these are the position and hexadecimal RGB values that you need to enter for each slider. For the leftmost slider, make sure that it is in the position 0, 0.00, and when you click on the colour, click on the hex tab, and then type in 100606. The second slider should be in position 0.541 and should have a hex value of 150808. And finally, the position of the third slider should be 0.9 and the hex value should be 330700. OK, now that the colours are right, let's adjust the noise texture properties. So. We're going to put the scale to 2.8, the detail to 16, the roughness to 0.75, and the distortion to 3. Even after those changes, it still doesn't quite look like wood, so we're going to bring in some new nodes. Press Shift A and then type in Texture Coordinate, and then Shift A again and then type in Mapping. Connect the object output from the texture coordinate into the vector input of the mapping, and then the vector output of that into the vector input of noise texture. We're going to use the mapping node to squash the noise inward, so rather than looking like a muddy cloud, we actually have wood. So put the scale of X up to 15 and see the effect that this has had on the wood. OK, that looks good. However, we can make it look even better by applying a bump map. So Shift A, select Bump, then turn the strength down to 0.05 and connect from the noise texture the factor to the height of the bump map and then from the normal output of the bump map into the normal of the glossy BSDF. 
brilliant, this now looks like it could be wood. Notice also that there is a certain reflection. This is given by the glossy BSDF roughness, which you can adjust as you see fit. While this certainly is a good start, we can add a little bit more detail. If you have a look at the reference image, you can see that there are large streaks of colour that don't seem to completely match with the rest of the door. And so we're going to add this as a part of our material. Fortunately, in order to create these large variations of colour, we've actually done most of the hard work. Just select all of the nodes before the material output, then press Shift D and then drag them up so that they are separated from the originals. Connect the output of the new glossy BSDF node into the surface input of the material output. You should see no discernible difference when you do this. The large streaks are slightly different in colour to the rest of the door, so for the colour ramp let's change the sliders to the following configuration. The first slider should be in position 0.523 with the hex value of 0D0505. The second slider should be at position 0.714 with a value of 150808. And the final third slider should be at position 0.95 with a value of 330700. On the noise texture, the values that you should put in are a scale of 0.4, a detail of 0.5, a roughness of 0.75 and a distortion of 0.3. Then on the mapping node, change the scale in the X to 6.2 and then in the Z to 1.5. You can translate it slightly if you want, as per your preference. I'm going to translate the X coordinate by 0.1. Finally, I'm going to change the roughness of the glossy BSDF to 0.65. We now want our material to have the properties of both of our glossy nodes, so we're going to use a mix shader node. To do this, press Shift A and type in Mix Shader. Then drag the outputs of the glossy nodes into the inputs of the mix shader, and then the output finally into the surface of the material output. And then we have a finished material for our door. If you created a door frame earlier, then each part of the door frame should have the same material as the door itself. So in object mode, click on each part of the frame and then apply the door material to it. We're now going to create the brass material of the door handle and all of the locks. I have created a new material called brass and then in the shader editor, I deleted the principled BSDF shader like we did before. Create a glossy BSDF shader and a color ramp by pressing Shift A and selecting those nodes. Press the plus button in order to create a third slider in the color ramp and then put the left slider into position zero and give it a colour of A15400. The second slider should have a position of 0.695 and a hex value of D79526. The third slider should have a position of 1.00 and a hex value of FFDE51. I've adjusted the factor of the colour ramp to 0.15 and then the glossy BSDF to have roughness of 0.277. This doesn't quite yet look like brass, the colour is too dark, but we will be adding a few nodes which will make this look much better. Indeed, by pressing Shift A each time, create a noise texture node, a separate RGB, three math nodes with operation of multiply, and then a combine RGB. Then connect the color output of the noise texture into the image input of separate RGB. And then for each R, G and B outputs, connect them to one of the values of the math nodes. 
The output values of these should then feed back into the inputs of the combine RGB. Let's also create a glossy BSDF node and create a new mix shader node that we're going to be using later. Connect the glossy node to the material output and you should now see a rather psychedelic ceramic effect. Brass tends to have a rather green tinge to it and that's why we have separated out the colour from the noise texture into separate RGB channels. We can use the math nodes to multiply the values of the red, green and blue parts of the colour in order to make everything a little bit more green and that's what we'll do here. So in the math nodes, for the one that is fed from the R value, multiply that by 2. For green, multiply it by 3. And then finally for blue, 0 0.5. This has made the noise texture ever so slightly tinged green. Now let's turn our attention to the noise texture itself. Here we want to make sure that the values are scale of 12, a detail of 3, a roughness of 0 0.75 and a distortion of 0 0.5. Turn the roughness down on the glossy node to 0 0.25 and then connect the output of that into the mix shader along with the other glossy node. Then make that output from the mix shader go into the material output and you'll have combined the two together. After some experimentation, I found that the factor that works the best here on the mix shader is 0.075. Like we did with the door, we can add a little bit more realism by adding a bump node. So shift A and type in bump. Then connect the factor from the noise texture into the height of the bump node. And then the normal should go into the normal of the glossy node. Change the values of the strength to 0.03 and the distance to 0.005. You can play about with the values here as much as you like. However, I'm going to consider this brass material finished. So closing down the shader editor, I'm going to apply this material to the handle and to the locks. For the keyhole or the lock, we want to simulate that there is a cavity into which a key could be placed. So to do this, you should create a new black material, delete the principled BSDF node, replace it with a glossy BSDF node that just has the colour of black. Select the faces that you want to have a different material, and then in the materials tab, Make sure to press plus to add the new black material and then press assign in order to apply that to the mesh. When you're happy with that, find the second lock and then click the same faces in the cavity and apply the same black material to it. The door is now starting to look great. The final thing we have to do is create a new material for the door hinges. In the same window configuration as before, select one of the hinges and then go to the materials tab. Give it the same door material, but then click on the number that's next to door. This will create a copy. Rename this copy into hinge. You'll see, of course, that this material still has the exact same nodes as the door material. However, go to the first color ramp and change the first slider color to 0D, 0D, 0C at a position of 0 0.523. The second slider should have the color of 171704 at a position of 0 0.823. And finally, the third slider should have a colour of 5E5A1B at a position of 0 0.95.
In the second colour ramp below, we're going to make the sliders have the exact same colours, but at slightly different positions. So the first slider should have a colour of 0D, 0D, 0C at a position of 0 0.4. The second slider should have a colour of 171704 at position 0 0.623. And the third slider should have a colour of 5E5A1B at a position of 0 0.9. You can play around with these values as much as you want. However, when you're finished, simply select the other hinges and apply the material. And congratulations, this is the finished door. I think it looks pretty good. If you liked this video, then please do uh, press the like button and otherwise subscribe so you can keep up to date with new tutorials as they come out. Thanks very much.